Hey guys, today on Any Influence, we're doing something a little bit different. I like that. We're interviewing, I would say, one of the people who set the foundation for YouTube. Kids start at 12 years old. His name's Tanner Fox, a YouTube powerhouse. He does scooters, he does cars, he does business. This kid does everything under the sun. But this is the most raw interview I say we have done on an influence. It gets serious. We joke. We do our normal thing. But at the end of the day, I hope you guys really enjoy what this kid brings. He brings some perspective that we don't see all the time with these child stars growing up, things like that. So I hope you guys really get a kick out of what we bring you. Man, he's an inspiration. Make sure to go follow him. Also, his best friend Maverick sits in on it. Maverick's a great guy. He works at the shop that helped fix my Lamborghini. Love that kid. Not like love him like that, but y'all know what I'm saying. This dude's great. We're going to have Tanner and Maverick on many, many more times, I hope. Thanks, guys. Thumbs up. Hit the subscribe over yonder. Peace. Okay, guys, so welcome back to Uninfluenced. We'd like to thank Tanner Fox, Iceman, for coming in, being guests on the show. Uh, Going to do a little bit of different stuff, talk to a guy who rides a scooter and another guy we don't know what the hell he does. Uh, that's you. What do you oh, do? you don't know what I do? Yeah, what do you do, man? We're, we're what are really you known confused. for? What are you most known I got to talk to you your guys, boss. You guys have no I, Fox given reunited right now. Yeah, that's like huge. This is legendary. <laughs> no, Maverick, but. Maverick does pretty much all the same stuff I do, I feel like. Yeah. And then I also uh, sanded your front end of your car. That's why it's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> no. The the car looks good. And, yeah, Maverick's been uh, learning how to do body work, right? Yeah. Like paint and body. Uh, getting yelled at by Thomas. Oh, getting screamed at. It's not a bad thing. No. It's he be screamed worse. at, yeah. He needs it. Yeah. yeah. He needs the discipline. Structure. What happened? He does. He needs the structure. What, what happened? Nah, it's just like... Uh, He's scared Thomas is going to listen to this. No, thing. no, no. Thomas is awesome, honestly. But it, I just like say I won't put a tool back. So like just me being lazy, you know. So I, you get yelled at for not doing your job. No, well, no, 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 no. What? No, it's like for being lazy. Like, why'd you leave this tool here, or why'd you leave this here? Why'd you? It's just that stuff. And he, you could just tell you get over it because, like, I just am a tornado. Nah. So, so you get yelled at for being lazy. Yeah. But he's paying you to not be lazy. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's that all dude. my fault. Like that, I, I, that dude's a dick. <laughs> that I get it. He's a dick. Uh, and Tanner, some of our our audience is older, of course. Look at us; we're fucking old as shit. Uh, what do you do? Um, I make YouTube videos. I would say that's like my main gig mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I would say overall, I'm a internet person. I love being uh, on the internet, making videos. I ride scooters. I love action sports. Um, anything outdoors. Uh, I have a podcast of my own. We did, but we haven't really done it because he moved to Texas. What a loser. Uh, we do a lot of a lot of stuff on the internet. I, um, I've been making YouTube videos like more than half my life, so I just would really say that's that's the main thing. I would also say I'm an entrepreneur. I own a couple different businesses and stuff, a couple different things like that. Yeah, I'd like to get into that a little bit later, yeah. talking about the businesses because oh, it, yeah. it's cool and a lot of younger people don't realize they need to put their money and make their money work for them. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to spend and buy stupid shit like cars, motorcycles. Hold on, that's me. Which sometimes <laughs> is, in our case, a weird good investment mm -hmm. uh, if you do it right. Yeah, and it's a tax write-off. Yeah. So you're an influencer and you're on Uninfluenced. Yep. Yeah, so the name of our show, the reason it, it's all basically because my wife pissed me off one day, she would always buy stupid shit. And I'd be like, why did you buy this? It's just sitting in the closet. Oh, an influencer. Like, yeah, you know, I was like, you know, I'm tired of this influencer shit costing me money. So we need to teach people that you don't have to be influenced. You can watch everybody, but yeah. you don't have to be influenced to do everything they do. You know, all these people on Instagram. Hey, I just bought this weaved fucking basket. You need one of these. Or, or you ever seen those ab things that people put on their abs and it like vibrates? I use like, that does not I work. No, it works. If you put it, it works. If you oh, put it in the right spot, it works. <laughs> and it's not your abs. I've seen a couple people buy them. <laughs> yeah. That shit. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I've stuck one up my ass. It, yeah. It's... <laughs> it chipped his teeth, but yeah. uh, he's got a fucking. I did. It chipped his teeth. I did have. To you had it on high. I had to get a crown. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty crazy. So, um, scooters. I, I learned that you uh, you basically start out kind of X game ish style with scooters and things like that at the age of twelve, right? Filming on YouTube and stuff. Oh uh, yeah, pretty much. I've had a couple channels before. Uh, 2000, like I started my channel now actually with Maverick, which is funny in 2011. Before that, we both had um, uh, different channels and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. That's that's pretty cool. And um, you have. 10 oh, wait, what was your question? I'm sorry. So, what got you started? I'm getting warmed up on that. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, what got you started? I mean, at, it was 12 when oh, you yeah. started, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I basically, it's funny, full circle. I was on YouTube. I was an iPad kid. Like, I was always watching YouTube videos mm -hmm. on iPad. And I saw another writer, his name is Nikolai Rogotkin. He was way younger. This was probably 12, 11 years ago. He's a pro mountain biker now. I saw him doing BMX tricks when he was probably like 12 or 13. I thought that looked super cool. So I went to the skate park on a bike and it was like really hard. And then there was a bunch of like kids on like custom scooters and I didn't even know that was a thing. So then I got that. And then I started watching scooter YouTube videos and there was not a lot of them, but there was some. And then got a lot of inspiration from those guys. And then I wanted to make my own videos because I just love watching people make videos. And then mm -hmm. it all just tornadoed from there. Yeah. Is there a, uh, a component of that whole process for you that, that stands out as being a, a negative experience at all? Like at that age being, uh, you know, that, that public with a lot of things that most kids that age aren't? Um, <clears throat> is it... Is, is there an aspect of, of that journey, like when you first got started, that, that you look back at as a negative? Yes, I would say so. Like, I definitely, like, I've thought about this a lot more in the last, like, month especially. I definitely didn't know what I was signing myself up for, but I had, like, very big dreams, very big aspirations. I wanted to support my family, and I just kind of got after it. And um, I was literally, like, writing this shit down in, like, a journal to myself the other day. But... Um, I would feel like, hold on, let me think what I was going to say. Um, fuck, I lost my train of thought. No, you're good. Yeah. Um, we do tons of dead air. Yeah, yeah, no worries. It's that weed we're not supposed to talk about. Yeah, yeah. it is, bro, it is. <laughs> uh, sorry, I fucking just no, lost my train like, of thought, bro. In layman's turn, what's like the downside or the bad side of... Yeah, is it like Sorry, everywhere? That's, you know. okay, this is like what's funny. Like whenever someone asks me something like that, I immediately throw up like a wall in my head because there's like, there's people that watch that I, I always think like, I don't want them to think I'm ungrateful or anything. So that's where my head goes. But yeah, there's like definitely dark sides to anything you do in life. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it forces you, oh, this is what I was gonna say, is it, it forces you to learn like way more about yourself, I guess. Like you have to like inwardly look at, look at yourself like all the time. Yeah. And like when your channel's going down at a young age, especially like my brain's not fully developed or now it's getting there. But when I'm younger and a video doesn't do good, that directly would correlate how I feel about myself kind of thing. Yeah. I was like cheesy as that sounds, but like that shit really does affect kids my age. So I really spent a lot of like the last like couple of years questioning my existence and kind of like trying to grow up internally because I spent so much time like just doing videos every day. And it was always like, I just woke up and I did stuff and I never thought about growing up, I guess. So yeah. I kind of like tried to aim towards that and like think about everything more. I honestly think, there's, I, again, I don't want to make it sound like it's like a shitty thing because I'm so grateful to do what I do. Like I literally love making videos and all the stuff like that, but there is so many negatives that come with the space you're in if you're not prepared for it. Yeah. But like someone like you, like seeing this like social media egg grow and then you guys are businessmen, you can go, okay, this is how we're going to insert ourselves. For me, I was like learning business, learning the world, like in the mix of it all. So it was a really weird process, I would say. Um, and then I don't know, at some point too, I definitely went down like thinking like, why, like, why is this even my job? Like for a second, you kind of forget about all the work you put in. I'm sure you guys have felt that in growing businesses. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, you kind of get imposter syndrome a little bit and you're like, hold up. But then it's like, no, I work to do this stuff. It's like, do I want to do this stuff? And then I feel like I also get in thoughts where it gets really overwhelming all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, this only probably started happening like a year and a half ago. I would always air out, like I'm the most open book. Like I would literally air out everything. I had no idea what anything meant to anyone. I just would say shit. And the last year I've been like, whoa, I don't want to tell people about this. I don't want to tell people about this. Like me dealing with my mental stuff the last like two years, this has been the first time I'm like, 
I don't know how to share this. Like, I don't want to share this. So yeah. It's kind of been a weird thing. I'm, I'm navigating, like, growing up and then doing all this stuff and then growing up on video and there's a business. And it's, I don't know. It's too many words to even. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I will say that uh, irrespective of age, uh, authenticity resonates with everybody. Mm -hmm. Every crowd, every uh, niche, every genre, whatever is that, you know, especially people that are, are in the limelight or, or that have big followings, you know, when they share things, especially if they're personal, you know, struggles that they have or, or things that, that a lot of times people don't see, they don't see that side of, of them. Mm -hmm. And, and with a lot of these people, it's things that they've gone through, you know, so for them to, to see something that they can relate to, is super super powerful. Yeah. So I know it's tough, but it's important to uh, not to, to air everything. I mean, yeah. some, some things I think should be kept personal and private. And but that's what I'm trying to yeah kind of get back to because at the same time it's like I look back and it's like this is I don't know not to make it sound dramatic, but it's kind of like my destiny. Like I feel like this is I'm exactly where I should be, and I should like I am the guy that should be making videos. So now I've been trying to like find that again where it's yeah. like I want to inspire people, but I want to give the right message and then. I don't know. Then there's a whole aspect of challenging your like ego in this whole space. And then like, and then like questioning what you noticing what your ego wants, you know, girls and money and cars and do this and that and this. But then it's like, you're in this position. And it's like, if you can cancel out those thoughts, like what would you accomplish? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, does that it, make any sense? No, it does. I mean, it's yeah. a double edged sword. You know, the, there's the, so the many like variables that you like learn about. And then I believe in like the manifesting all that stuff because I don't know how I've done all this shit I've done. So well, then it's I, hard work. But also it's like it's right place, right effort. time, opportunity. Like I don't know. I'd like to think I'm a good person. I'm deserving of also well, it. A lot of people think YouTube's the lottery, right? Yeah, so, they do think that. It's so yeah. Funny. So you you busted your ass from 12 years old, where most people at 12 years old aren't thinking about picking up a camera. They're not thinking about picking up a camera, learning a new trick, yep. and studying. And as an adult. 42 years old, I tell my grown ass men that work for me, pick up a phone, Google what you're working on, look on YouTube, because somebody's recorded that, how to fix it before calling me with some dumb ass shit. Yeah. yeah. And you at 12 years old decided, I'm going to pick up a camera and I'm going to teach people how to do this. Yeah. So that's not a lottery ticket. That's but I you think thinking it also outside is. the box and you related to a group. But then like internally, I'm thinking like, how did that even happen and no, it's because he works hard but, but, but I don't think work. at the yeah. time it was like a new niche that we created making content and stuff also like there was nobody really doing the lifestyle vlogging stuff at our age like there was maybe the romans and casey's and the older people yeah you but need he to start doing is open up toys toys oh, like yeah, ryan's toy, toy yeah. review oh like huh. make toys or make a no, toy just channel? open up the toys like oh shit. The, the reaction yeah. videos you do that as an adult oh shit them lego that's another weird thing like the pokemon I, cards yeah i feel like i went through like two years of my career where i kind of like sold out a little bit but i didn't sell out because i had like hot wheels and like that was like a dream to do but then i was like signed to them and then i felt like a disney character i'd sell out for like two wheels. years and that was like not oh, yeah. that fun me too yeah what I would sell it for Hot Wheels. Yeah. No, and I did. <laughs> but it was like, then I already kind of did that like toy phase and like I wasn't allowed to do shit. And then that like really, that was like a weird time. I so I feel like now I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm just really trying to figure out what the fuck's inside of me. I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> I had a non-compete when I but was- But I have an idea now. I was signed to a media company, a very large media company to be a personality on TV. Mm -hmm. They didn't know where they wanted to put me. But I'm signed for two years. I couldn't do YouTube. I couldn't put certain shit on Facebook. Basically, really? that. Oh, How long yeah. ago was this? SEMA, probably six years. No. Because they owned the rights, like to you. They basically owned my talent rights to me putting out content. Like based, your face. Based on card. Wow. Car stuff. Yeah. And my passion is cars. Yeah. You know, and, but we talk about other stuff. So on here, we talk about cars because, I mean, hell, that screensaver is a damn car. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who's that glass car that is, but it's a car. Uh, just kidding. That ain't ugly. Yeah. That thing's beautiful. Yeah. 1.2 uh, million. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, him, he turned kind of like you, people would look at him and be like, you sell dogs and you have these cars. You want a lottery ticket. It's a lottery ticket. You're just a lucky motherfucker. Mm -hmm. But the, the, I watched this dude work to a point to where I take shit off his plate at times to where like, I don't even want to bug him with this. I know the answer because we're so in sync on shit we do. That I'm not even going to bother him with this dumb shit because I already know the answer, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm taking those to help him because he works so hard. 
And it's the same thing you're doing. He did this with dogs and all the other hard shit he's doing, the dog food, the dogs, the online training, you know, and all this stuff. You did the same thing at a younger age, and it's paying off for you. Yeah. Versus you get someone that picks up a camera and just like, this dude did it, and all he had was a fucking scooter. Yeah. You know, I got this nice camera. I got this, and they're expecting to turn that on, hit record, put the memory card in, and upload to YouTube. No editing, no nothing, no learning shit. Yeah. Why in the fuck is this kid with a scooter getting five million views? That's and- that's actually very true. You made a good point. Like I was, I'm a total algorithm nerd and all that shit. I yeah, was hustling it, all that it, shit. And and we hell as a for two years, you know, we're studying analytics, algorithms, keyword tagging, yep. fucking silly shit that you wouldn't think forty two year old men are gonna be looking up. And we're looking this shit up because that's how it works. Oh yeah, it's a machine. Yeah, and you're not doing it. One video, people see that 10 minutes could be 100 hours of work to get that out because of all the research you did, all the building a thumbnail. That's a lot of work for 10 minutes. Yeah, thanks. You know, so it's not like, hey, this kid got lucky with a fucking lottery ticket. No, but but he also, like, there was so much grinding before he even got popping. It was like... Well, yeah, you're two to three years with nobody giving a shit what you put on (laughs) YouTube. No, that is true. So, like, it, it... it's a oh, lot yeah. of grinding before you pop, and then all of a sudden you pop, and then people but see still, you. Still, it's like you think about that whole thing, and it is still right time, right place. Like, why? Well, I think it's a combination of things. Yeah, is yeah. It, is it statistically, yes, it is a lottery ticket. If you if you think about the population, the amount of people that that post shit to a YouTube channel, and and what that percentage is that actually can afford to do that shit for a living and yeah. make a good living, it is. It, it's a it's an anomaly. Yeah, you know, it's a fraction of a percentage. However, the reason why, in my opinion somebody like you or, or anybody that grows a channel to, to that degree stands out as two reasons. Number one is the hard work, but it's not just that, right? There are a lot of people that work yeah. their fucking ass off that, that, you know, die with, without a fucking pot to piss in. Yeah. yeah. So it, it takes, you know, the hard work element is a given, but the, the one kind of it factor that, that I don't think, uh, you know, we've mentioned is, is that is that you, you have to have it, for people to want to watch you. Yeah, like, of course. I mean, no, ma- no matter who, who you are or who you have behind you or how much money you dump into promoting things or whatever, if it sucks, it's not going to matter. You know? So uh, to me, like all of those things have to be present. And in that regard, it kind of is a lottery ticket. You yeah. Know? But, <clears throat> yeah. But I it's mean, a deserving one. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, you want to. I guess, still. yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, it's a weird thing for me to even process in my own brain because it doesn't make any sense to me. I just grew up watching YouTube and being fans of all these people and I know them all and I got to meet them all. And it was, it was like a constant dream just like unfolding. Who are your top three influences uh, or, or role models as far as YouTube goes? I would uh, honestly say Roman Atwood, Casey Neistat, and Logan Paul. Casey Neistat's a fucking genius. Yeah. I, I was like really good at like watching people's stuff and then being like, I like that about them and then I'd steal it. Yeah. Or like I make it, I'd morph it into this the, my character basically like you know what I mean like because yeah. Casey's not a scooter rider but yeah. I am so like how do I how do I use his pizzazz and then try to like absorb it a little bit to change my shit up so I would do that with like anyone I liked pretty much yeah and Casey's one of the people who went out and learned from someone like Peter McKinnon like he was a dork as well he was like I I know how to set these cameras up but this guy's doing it so much better yeah how. Yeah. And he just had the balls to keep messaging the dude till the dude messaged him back and like, dude, shut the fuck up, do this, do this, do this. You know, and Casey's another anomaly. I mean, look at he was in a closet for what, five years in New York City. Yeah, bro. You know? No, I've, I've followed his whole journey. I love I'm I'd say he's probably my favorite YouTuber and creator. He's, he's really awesome. I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda dork out watching Logan Paul. Not yeah. because of I wouldn't say it's full content. I like his content, don't get me wrong, but the business behind his no, content. No, it's, it's in, yeah, it's very. It's a machine. Yeah, it's he's crazy. a machine. That's no, like literally it, how to describe it. That's how this sense. dude is right here. I mean, people don't realize this. It's, he can do so much shit and it's like, dude, I can't even comprehend what the fuck you're doing to make this work. I'd have done, my shit would have blew up. My head would be popped. No, Logan doesn't have like an off button. It seems like he's always innovating and changing and doing the next big thing and He's got a plan, it seems like, like two years out all yeah. the time. Yeah. Which is really impressive. I have a two-day plan. Today I'm going to do something. Just today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow, I don't know. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow's fucked. A two-day plan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's how we roll. 
<laughs> I like that. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So my one thing I've noticed and I've thought this from like I would class you kind of child star, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of them have trouble because from, we'll say, we'll use your age range from 12 to 20. Well, you're what, 22 now? Yeah, yeah. So from that age, you always have a camera on. You always have people watching you. Mm-hmm. When the camera's off, you almost, at a certain age, don't know how to act anymore. If yeah. There's not a red light. Just, yeah, no, seriously. You, you know, it's seriously. almost like to make this dude act normal, I just need a laser pointer. Just be like, say, bro, we're recording. <laughs> yeah. Just act right. You yeah. know? No, all the time it's like I won't I don't want to do something unless it's filmed. Yeah. Like, yeah. I won't I won't do a scooter trick or I won't do a stunt. Well, I'm telling you it's your, it's literally my reward system. Yeah. Like it is. Like it's probably one of the only things I get serotonin from. Do you think it's that like numbers. makes it harder on you though that the, um, the I've fact like, that when the camera's off, you almost but this is what I did the last like two years is I really challenged that because I like, I did a lot of inward like uh, thoughts. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of inward thoughts about myself and like I knew that I needed to like work on that because yeah. I literally was like, I get hyper obsessed with shit. Like I went from scootering to directly to YouTube and like that was my new obsession. So I needed to like give myself some fucking time to let all that shit wear off. And then like, I kind of felt like I, since I was working so much in my child years, like I basically didn't have a, I mean, I did a bunch of fun shit for videos from like 15 to 18. But it didn't feel rewarding because- But then that's like the camera. last years of my childhood. And then I got really depressed about like, I was like, oh, I don't wanna like, all my friends are doing their child shit. And then, so I kind of spent the last two years trying to like waste time on purpose and like just get those years and time in to like kind of develop, I guess. Yeah. So that's helped a lot. And then now like, I've, I'm really trying to formulate because I'd like, well, I'm going to come back to like social media full time again. Mm-hmm. I've really taken the last year to like, ch- like question all that stuff and challenge myself and all that stuff. But I feel like I finally made good progress in the way that like that stuff and how much numbers meant to me, like was really affecting how my day to day life was. And now I've like detached that. And I'm, I feel like I'm back to more how I was in the beginning of YouTube. And that's why it worked at the beginning because it was so authentic. It was just fun. And it was what I was actually doing. And yeah. so I feel like I've, I've gotten pretty close back to there, but it's obviously still every day is a new day. So it's yeah. a journey, but. Something we've, I know I've had to learn it as a businessman. I'm pretty sure he does too. I work a lot. I get up at six in the morning. Most of the time I work till 10, 11 o'clock at night. Most of the time you can text me till midnight and I'm answering. Then I'm back up at five thirty-six and I'm working again. But there's those certain times that I can separate. So I'm working for four hours and I'm busting my ass for those four hours. But he calls me my wife calls me and it's like hey you want to do this have you learned to flip that switch at your age to where i'm no longer working because that's what youtube and scooter is to where i can still be me flip that switch and i can almost be more relaxed and go hang out with him my wife you know my brother my sister have you got that you haven't got that no i don't think so yeah and it takes time it's actually i would say something you really have to learn like I mastering mean, your split personalities. Almost. I mean, to me, it's a like right managing your time to where you know when to shut off your YouTube work personality oh. into your normal I'm Tanner Fox personality. Yeah, I don't know the I two was, of them. Separately. I think Tanner's always on though. Yeah, <laughs> so, some problem. of it is some of it is age too. Is that you can yeah. you can burn the candle at both ends way more when you're your age than you can like you know as, as a as a seal for 12 years that that's what that is you know from 18 to 30 you know i was working fucking 25 hours a day basically yeah. and, and like your adrenal glands get shot and it, i mean it fucks your whole body up yeah, because yeah. you're you've got all these different things going on and there's there's really no downtime as you get older you you start to realize kind of like an er doctor if a, a fucking bus crash comes in where you know there's 40 people that are injured some of them are about to die some of them have minor injuries and everything in between is you, you have to figure out how to triage your own fucking problems and issues that way where, where you know, okay, for me to be productive. I've never even thought about that. I have to blow off steam here and, and you have to make yourself do it. Like you, you have to prioritize Th- this shit's going to take a back seat uh, and I'm going to fucking blow off this steam and I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever I have to do until I feel normal enough again to, to go fucking work and you will, you will be more productive. And how long does that last for you? I mean, it, as long as it takes, Oh, you know, I mean, sometimes maybe it's a, so tough. I feel like that's kind of what I'm in now. Cause it, yeah. like the, the, so there was a version of me that was just going and doing and knew what to do. 
And then that guy was just lost, and I was like, it pissed me off because yeah. I didn't know where he went. Mm -hmm. So so then I just stopped, and I've been just like waiting for him to come back. I feel like yeah, I mean, so just just do and shit he slowly, for no reason. Like he slowly is. Yeah, just just do do and try things for no fucking reason other than to just do something else. Yeah. Sometimes for me, it's a 20 minute motorcycle ride. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's three fucking days of, of just saying, you know what, I'm gonna fucking put it all off until I until I can go back to it. Yeah. You know, and it's just a case by case basis. Yeah, he's he's real big on knowing when I'm stressed out. Him and my wife are known to tell me basically, he can tell and I'll get a text. You wanna go for a drive? You wanna go for a motorcycle ride? And same, you know, I'll be like, hey, we doing this? To kinda, that's our relief is going out and I mean, you can ask this Like, dude. that's your cookie. Yeah, no, you can this, ask this dude. We, okay, we went to Mexico on a normal side street, 45 miles an hour, 0 to 150, and I don't know how many seconds, but three seconds, four but seconds. To <laughs> me, that's a way that I'm stressed out, and it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah I feel that. I know what you mean. To me, there's an important distinction to make. You mentioned that's your cookie. It, it's actually not your cookie. It's more of your oxygen mask in a fucking airplane that's uh. going down. It's, huh. it's not a it's not a reward it's it's a relief valve that that if you don't engage in that you're you're gonna crash the fucking plane wow mm -hmm. that changed my thought press because i feel like everything's in my head is based off of like a reward like that mm -hmm. like i earned no that's a necessity mm -hmm. you know but again a lot of that is your age you know yeah. because when when we were that age it's like you you feel like your your mortality isn't something that's even in the back of your mind when you're 22. Yeah. No. When you're 42, it is. You know, and, and so I'm going to get so many panties dropped at your age that. Wait, wait. What do you mean immortality? Like you you think you're invincible, right? Is is that you're not? I've been learning that I'm not. Yeah, but but uh, uh, wait. Yeah, <laughs> wait yeah, 20, yeah, yeah. Like check check back in 20 years when we're in our fucking 60s and you're in our shoes. Yeah. Right. And, and it'll be 10, 10x that, you yeah. know. But. Sitting, reversing the roles as I was coming up as a plumber for many years, I'd laugh at the 40 year olds telling me, wait till you get to be my age. And I'm like, bitch, I ain't ever gonna feel that way. When you're my age? Yeah. And then now I'm that age and I'm looking at you like, bitch, wait till you get to be <laughs> Bro, my it's age. It's funny you even say that because when I was 12, there was like the 19 year old kids at the skate park and they'd be like, I don't know how you guys ride 12 hours a day. I'm <laughs> And now I'm them. Yeah. yeah, I get there for forty minutes. I'm like, "Fuck this! I'm out." <laughs> See, your your cookie is things you don't have to show the the public. Your reward. Mm -hmm. So, say you have hobbies, which our hobbies we tend to revolve around the show and shit. But we don't record everything we do for our cookie. You know, the car outside. That's a reward to myself for the hard work I do. It just so happens that I can record off my hard work. Yeah, you know. When I decide, oh, fuck it, I want to go buy a watch. That's a reward for me. Mm -hmm. I don't have to put that watch on camera. And you like, like collecting them? Yeah. Be, yeah. I, it's not the collecting for the money. It's I think I love the mechanics of cars, watches. I love watching how things work, uh -huh. if that makes sense. I'm kind of like you. I'm a dork, and I, I like to figure things out. Like, if it's impossible, Wait, let me pause that's here. bullshit. <laughs> Do you know I learned what a dork is today? What is a dork? It's a whale dick. <laughs> yeah. I just learned that today. Well, you're a whale dick. And I'm I know. a whale dick. We're both whale dicks. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah, bro. I just learned that today. Uh, Where did you learn that? From a chick on a boat. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, a so there's dick. worse ways to learn that. Can you pull up if that's real? Uh, I want to know if that's real, yeah. He'll pull it up right there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the reward don't have to be shown. The cookie don't have to be shown. The cookie should be what makes you feel like to me this is my way of thinking the cookie the reward should be this is mine i'm thanking myself for all my hard work this is my relief yeah whether it be a new scooter a new watch a new car a house yeah. sheets towels simple shit that makes you happy inside that nobody else has to fucking know it's that thing yeah you know you don't have to put it on camera you don't have to brag about it it Sometimes what we do just yeah, happens yeah. to be on camera. That's but, the thing, yeah. That's kind of like the content is what you think is yeah, fun. Yeah, we're, <clears throat> we're lucky that that's how we're trying to set ours up is our rewards. But the backside of it is our audience don't see the other shit we're doing, the hard work-wise. This is our release yeah. to come in here and bitch like assholes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So we kind of did it backwards. Hold on. 12 yeah, I, inches? I think in that same... Uh, in that same vein, no pun intended with what we're looking up, is, uh, you know, the, the reward is, is something that you want and don't need. 
you know, but the balance in your life from a mental health and physical health standpoint oh, God, are things that you actually need. Yeah. And that's, that's balance. Like if you, if you don't have that, everything is going to go downhill. Yeah. You know? There you go. How uh, big is a whale's dork? <laughs> I thought it'd be bigger for sure. That's yeah. what she said. Wait, is it called a dork? She said. Oh, wait, yeah, Lily Bear. Yeah, a whale's dork. Wait, click on what is a dork originally? Slang term for penis. Hell yeah. So in the 1960s, they were running around calling people dorks for penis. Yeah. Now they just call now them straight I'm, dick. Yeah, now you're just fucking dick. You're just dick. fucking dickhead. <laughs> yeah. What is a Wayne? What is a Wayne? Yeah. Yeah, fucking yeah. rabbit hole. This is this Google. Is, that's what I do from eleven to midnight. <laughs> <laughs> this, fucking Dude. this and like, fucking. what the fuck's the next video? Yeah. I go down endless rabbit holes. Oh, I, I will too, especially if it's something. I got bitched out earlier for someone. Well, I messaged Sean about buying a car seat, and that John's like, "Hey, why didn't you film that?" You imagine the content we would have got. Navy yeah. Seal gives advice <laughs> on baby seats. It's yeah. Like, yeah, but like I'm that dorky where I'm looking at a car seat for my new kid and I call or I message another dude like, all right, bro, check it out. I got A, B, and C brand. This, this, what do you think? And he's like, your your B was my A and your, and I'm like, fuck. You know, yeah. Yeah, I'm that dorky too to where the wheels squeak on this motherfucker. So oh, yeah. anything I do, if I'm going to put any kind of money or time into it, chances are I'm going to be a dork about it. And I'm going to be a fucking Well, you have dick. to, yeah. You like, it has to consume you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another problem. Sometimes our obsessions or passions consume us. Yep. And that's part of being a creator, I think. Yeah, it uh, is. Or a businessman. No, uh, yeah, businessman for sure. I mean, the, the that's what I mean. competitiveness has to be there or, or you're not going to be successful, but, but it has to be balanced, you yeah. know, or, or you'll find yourself miserable because nothing is ever enough. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, it's like having sex for the first time. It's like, I want to have that shit again. And then the bitches went home. Man, this is fucking stupid. How can we tie this into getting laid? Yeah, you got a friend? What the, <laughs> What? What is, uh, like, from a five-year goal standpoint, where do you see yourself? Where do you want to see yourself in from say, right five now. years? Yeah. Um, I think my goal as of, like, right now, basically, like, I got thrown into this whole social media world, and I just, like, knew it was a big opportunity, and I just took advantage of it every day, and I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I didn't go to high school, so I don't know anything about anything in school. So basically, I'm taking every. No, I, I literally just stopped. I, I graduated eighth grade. Oh, eighth grade. Oh, shit. Yeah. So everything I learned in the last five years to me was college. And like, I've experienced just about, like, no, nah, I can't say every aspect because I'm still 22, but like, I've experienced a lot of aspects of this business world and I've been fucked over and I've done really well and I have this and that and this. And I feel like I've learned a lot about people and about what's important to me and everything. So, five year goal is I'm basically like restructuring my entire team and building it professionally this time. Cause before it was just like, people would be like, you should get an assistant. And I'd be like, yeah, well that's not my vibe right now. Like I don't wanna have a random person around me all the time. Cause I was 17 and stuff. So now it's like, okay, I have my, I just signed with my first manager ever. Um, I'm building back a different merchandising team, um, assistants, uh, content, like more uh, like of my own content production in-house. Kind of like what you guys do here. I'm building an office right now in um, San Diego. So I bought a building and we're building a big office in there and then we're gonna build um, like a private skate park in there. Awesome. And then I'm gonna do like, I have a bunch of ideas, like endless. I just, um, a five year goal from now is basically to do everything I did in the last five years, except for like 10 times better. That's pretty much my goal with all the knowledge I have. And now I've, this is what I think is cool is I always worked so hard and I was always really good at saving. And now I'm in a position where I can fund all my own shit. So I just have to take the time to be like mindful enough to do that and like do it the right way. So I think that's pretty cool because I don't have to have anyone like telling me what to do. So that, and that's what I'm excited to do. Um, so I say just build my businesses the next five years and learn structure because I've never had any of that, which I think big part of that's not going to school, which I finally learned growing up, like not going to high school. I have no structure in my real life. Yeah. That's what school's for. Like I never realized as a kid, but that's literally what it's for. Yeah. So um, I'd say that's pretty much my goals. So t taking it a step further then, do you see yourself, say, when you're 40, just continuing to do that? Or is, or is there from a 30,000-foot view standpoint something, something else you want to do with your life that you've thought of? Uh, I think that I will always do something. It just depends on, like, how big my pond is to, to what I could do. So I think that, like, right now I'll be focused on all this shit because it just, like, 
I also like need this shit to like want to be alive. Like I don't see a reason to being alive unless I'm doing this shit like literally. So I kind of like need something to be obsessed with or I'm literally just feel like worth like worthless. But that's not true. I mean, but not worthless. That was a harsh word to use. But like, I feel like I like I tried like chilling. Like I literally gave myself the opportunity to be a completely day by day citizen, not do any of this fucking social media bullshit. Anyone know me? Like I gave myself time to feel that. And it's like how long? Like probably since January. So since January to now you didn't. I've really done sh- I've like actually not kinda... done shit. Like I've actually for the first time like learned how to focus on myself instead of just like stress about what I'm but, gonna do when I get back, I guess. But the word in making yourself feel worthless. That was a harsh word, I guess. Yeah. Used. Because this to me, and I could be stepping on your question here, but just to hear that's kinda harsh. But for you to feel worthless without say YouTube or without social working. Media, like I feel like as a yeah, man, like you that, literally have to work or do something different. with your life. Working's way different than you think you have to be on here. Because in all honesty, I mean, I think these are the devil. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, but I get you want to work, you want to have stuff, but you have other businesses, right? Outside oh, yeah. of here. No, I mean, okay, my goal, I'm just saying in like when I'm 40, I think that like right now I'll be obsessed with this stuff because it's actually fun to me. Yeah. And like, And this is just what I need to do to like keep myself busy. And then this stuff will end and then I'll have a new, like I'll be at a new stair and then I could be like, all right, what do I want to do from here? But also, like, I'm really big into investing in real estate and stocks. So, I mean, I just keep doing that and do whatever I want. Yeah, because we got a guy named Randy that listens, and he's an idiot. If he hears <laughs> worthless, he'll lose his shit. <laughs> no, that was a bad, like, that was like a harsh word. I just mean, like, I think I'll always be working or doing something. Like, I finally have accepted that about myself. Like, that's just, like, who I am. Like, I, I like find, creating. Yeah, I find it cool to hear a 22-year-old to me, it's more inspirational than cool to hear you like, well, I have this. I have this lined up. I'm self-funded. I have this. You know how many 22-year-olds that would have that bank account that wouldn't give a shit about that building, wouldn't be give a shit about it? I know. It's investing. fucking hard. So to me, in all honesty, school is, again, I would say important to an extent. But common <laughs> sense and knowing how to move shit around in this day and age is becoming more important. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the school of hard knocks is priceless. I mean, to me, in hearing you speak, maybe uh, fulfilled would have been a better word. You know, yeah. you, you, need, yeah. you need to, to work make to me feel fulfilled. fulfilled. It's you know? true. Yeah. yeah, that's a way better word. Yeah, yeah. but, uh, you know, I'm curious from a, like, again, just from, from kind of the long game standpoint, um, you know, you're doing all this stuff. Do you, do you have something outside of what you do now? Uh, that exists or that you want to exist that doesn't have anything to do with this? Like, do you want to, you know, have, have a management company that manages other people like that? Do you want to move into to some total other different industry or is this kind of like- I have like so many ideas <clears throat> and they're all passion projects. Like, yeah, starting different types of companies and like making, I want to like make my own documentaries and like start production companies. Like I have all those ideas. It just, I think it just has to flow when it's going to flow that way. Because- I just like, I don't really know what's going on. Like I literally just take things like as I feel, like yeah. as they make sense. But I like, I have dreams of all that kind of stuff and I have like endless ideas. One thing I'm waiting on is for the office. Cause like I've never, I've never showed up. Like, okay, I work every day, but like I never showed up and worked somewhere. So when I start doing that, I'll have my office and I'll be able to actually like go to the office on the same day as my employees type of stuff. I think that's when I'll get a like, I'll be up in my, my like moves into doing more stuff like that and being able to like, like hire editors and hire filmers and having people in house and, um, and just even just expand my business, like from myself. Cause I've also watched so many people in this industry grow businesses from zero to a hundred million dollars. I watched how they did it and how they build all their teams and how they put people in places and how they did all that. So I think this building is going to be a huge key for me. I've just been waiting on it for so long. Cause like before the warehouse, I was basically like, I had, bought like a big house in the Temecula. I was pretty much just like trapped there. Like I didn't want to leave because it was like a compound. Like I didn't need to leave. So then I was trying to think of like what the next thing is. And then I literally the warehouse kind of fell into my lap. Like I was looking to rent a warehouse and then the guy said, are you looking to buy this? One just came up on the market and it was like a pristine building. So we got it. And it all just kind of like randomly fell into place, I guess. But you said for the last six months you've been doing jack shit, right? Not jack shit. I've really been like working internally on like rewiring everybody in my life because I, I, w- I was super um, neglectful of like the operation that I had created. 
I had no idea what I did until like about four or five months ago. Like I was just like every day, wake up, film a cool video, do this, do this brand deal, promote this merch, do this, do that. And then like I stopped back and like I actually started looking at the financial people and the people doing this and the people doing the merchandising and people do, people doing everything. And it was like, hold on, like why have I not been more involved? And it was like, cause everyone was just letting me run around on this leash cause I'm this kid with all this money. And just as long as Tanner's doing whatever the fuck he wants, he's not gonna like turn around and think twice about stuff. So that's really what I was doing is like clean slate. And then I've been like, all right, what's important to me? And like really trying to, I don't know. I was like pretty mentally fried and then I've been just kind of like navigating that, I guess. So from a, like a chronological timeline standpoint, over the last six months, what, what does an average day look like from the time you get up at what time, what you do all day until you go to bed? So I've probably been at like my worst mental spot in the last six months and it's finally turned around. I mean, it hasn't even turned around. Like I had an episode like four days ago and he helped me. But, but before that I didn't for like two weeks. So that was the longest gap. Um, but um, like an average day, bro, it was pretty much me waking up. What, like, about what time? Fucking, I would probably go to bed late as fuck. I'd probably wake up at like 11 because I just like wanted to waste the days as much as I possibly could. You ain't doing that when you're 40. And then <laughs> I would pretty much, it would be like a cluster fuck of like, okay, I gotta do this. I, like, I gotta talk to this person. I gotta meet about this. I gotta make sure this account's good. I gotta talk to a lawyer about this. I gotta fucking move out of the, I gotta finish packing up my house because I just sold my house in like March. I was doing that. I was like having all these calls with all these lawyers, talking to all these people, fucking like, it was just, but it was me like learning the process for the first time. So it was, oh, and I had to set up like all these, all this bank bullshit. And like, I, I was my first time doing all that. And that, that just took like fucking days and hours and phone calls and then, and then rewiring all your accounts. And like, there was just like a lot of fucking horse shit that I was like mostly administrative. It was all this like really, yeah, small dinky stuff that I never shit. did. Cause I had people for it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, but it was good. Cause like, I didn't even know that shit existed. So it was good to get in the weeds and like care about that stuff. And then now I'm, I'm, I'm still fixing it all. Or if you move to Texas, we'll get you with a banker that'll help you. Oh no, everything's fucking set up solid now. Like everything's fucking great now. Um, uh, it's just like, I just, I just neglected my businesses. Like I didn't know what I had started. I was super young. I started 10 companies and I didn't have time to look at even fucking, well, I had time, but I didn't even give a fuck to look at one of them. So I just never looked. And then it was like, oh, this could be ran a lot better. Like I'm not taking this as serious as I should. And, yeah. and then also kind of like, I don't know, maybe for you guys, but you go in like, for me, like I'm like 18 before that, like you're a kid. And then you kind of go through a period where you, like you're, you open up to your like adulthood, I guess, too. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden, like adulthood becomes mad fucking crazy. Like, and it's like, this is real. Like I gotta like step up a little bit. Like I'm not a little fucking See, when fucker. When I was 19, I already had my first kid. Really? Yeah. So, so I, you were stepping the fuck up. Like yeah, I got, that's what, I, so I you know more than me. With, I got slapped with adulthood real fast. Yeah, so, so like, you know more than me. It wasn't. Well, this little fucker's gotta eat. Yeah. No, and, it, and it's on you. And yeah, so you were, you had to put your life aside real quick and just fucking buck up. But. I feel like I've been like trying to just do that in a good way. And like, I don't know, bro. for me, it's like so, um, being inside of my head is like so intense. And like everything's so intense what's like for the, no reason. What's the episodes? Like you said, four days ago, you had an episode. Bro, like everything just feels like it's going to end. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go out on a limb here and kind of just try to guess, throw some guesses yeah, yeah, yeah. at you. Uh, so you're, Four months are going by and you're starting to get everything and you're starting to, all this shit starting to pile up on you that you never really knew was there. Yeah. And then you go, you get in a well, And simultaneously, like I have like mental illnesses. Well, I don't even like to call them that, but I had problems. Is it? That I was like dealing depression, with. Depression, anxiety? Or? I've been told I'm bipolar. I've been diagnosed. I have Asperger's. Um, I mean, that comes with ADHD and all that stuff. Yeah. But, and then yeah, depression, anxiety and all that stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, anxieties. And I'll be the first to tell you, I have anxiety. We've talked about it a couple times on here, and I don't know if I've ever had an attack or anything in front of you. I mean, it, not that I've noticed. It's just like almost like a, I would almost relate it more to like a bipolar episode. So, but it's not like I'm like, ah, fuck. If you want, I'll explain what mine feel like. Okay. So, mine feel, I get in a situation where right now, if this curtain caught on fire, instead of common sense, slow down, put the curtain out. My ass would be like, how the fuck can I jump over my, get the fuck up out of here? My heart starts. 
So See, that five minutes of me not calming down and doing what I should do, mentally I know what to do. Yeah. But it's like another side of your brain's telling you, you got to do this, you got to do this. So that five minutes like feels... You, have, you feel like you have voices in your head? Yeah, and it feels like I just spent eight hours working out the hardest I've ever worked out. So once that time period's done mm -hmm. of this attacker yeah. episode... You're fried for like two days. Yeah, the next day I don't want to do shit. I don't yeah. want to talk to nobody, and I'm fucked. Yeah. You know, and till I learned to deal with that, again, that's age and leaning on people to, to help you. Uh, it was fucked. Mm -hmm. Dude, I couldn't, I couldn't get shit done. You couldn't tell me a motherfucking thing. Yeah. And uh, now I control it. I still have them. I mean, I don't, I don't know if they're ever going away, but if you would have told me that, Eight years ago, nine years ago, hey man, I had an anxiety attack. I'm fucking, I ain't coming to work. Or like, look, bitch, there's no such thing as a motherfucking anxiety attack. You're a crazy motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You probably drank too much caffeine, too much beer, too much this, which is also probably a factor. Oh, uh, 100%. Like nutrition. That's what I've learned in the last. Like, I've only learned caffeine that myself. and nutrition. And he's a big key on nutrition fixes. What probably 95 percent of all your bullshit. Yeah. And it's no different than a vehicle. I mean, your, your body yeah. is a fucking machine. If you yeah. put shit into it, it's going to run like shit. I literally told someone that today. I, I was like, you can't run a car in Gatorade. <laughs> I put 87 in this joint. <laughs> uh, that's what I've been doing, bro, too. I don't go premium. But um, <laughs> Shit got water in it. I'm going to mainline 109 for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. but, but I would say, like, mine, like, for instance, like, the other day, it's, like, hard to explain. Like, I don't know how because, like, you're here. You have, like, your perception of the world. You, you like have that all locked in like you know what you feel about this you know what you feel about that you know what food you like you know blah 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 blah. you know what your plans are you know what makes you excited you know what you love you know who you love like all that it will be like all in a good wave for instance like that's why i always say like every day is a new journey when i'm like oh i'm doing better it's like every day is a new journey at the end of the day because it's like like you'll be feeling some type of way everything's fucking like you've been building in your mind like you've been building everything up like building a fucking sandcastle everything's solid okay i know how i feel and then all of a sudden, maybe you don't like get enough water or you start getting a little, I don't know what the fuck triggers it, but then all of a sudden that's all completely gone, it feels like, and you have no perception of like what actually is connected into you. And then, and then you don't know what, or for me, I don't know what to think about. So then I immediately fill my brain with like all the things that I should do. And then that's like, and then I'm like, oh my God, that sounds like way too overwhelming. Like I can't turn off thinking about what I have to do. So then I usually like will, like smoke <laughs> and then um fucking block that shit out and then it wears off and then it's usually the same cycle again mm -hmm. but that's pretty much how i would say it, like it feels it's just like I, it's hard to explain like i'll say what happened the other day like i was staying with maverick and i, and I came out to texas really for my mental health because i was like so stuck in like a bunch of ruts in san diego i literally came here with like a one-way flight just to like be stimulated with like new stuff and make myself uncomfortable because I really need that. Yeah. So that's like literally why I'm here. And um, I was staying at his house and then like randomly one night, I was just like, I got super into my head. I started like thinking he was all mad and Gage was all mad and like they didn't want me there. And which was not true. No, it wasn't true. But I was like, oh, I was like losing all this like motivation I built up. And I was like, I was like, fuck this. Like, I don't want to, I, I was trying to text my mom. I was like, I think I'm just gonna fly home tomorrow. Um, and then I was just like, all right, I'm just going to get a hotel. Cause I just need to like be in my own space. So then I got a hotel, but I didn't even tell him. So then he's like, where are you? And I was like, oh, I got a hotel. And he's like, what the fuck? Like, why? And I don't remember what I said. What, what You're just I? like, I need a, I need my own bathroom or something. No, I was like, I was like, bro, I just need my own fucking space. Cause I can't think about my life. Like every time I'm out be hanging around them, it was just like, Gage is constantly chilling and we're just like, they're playing video games and they're getting food and this. And I, I have, I need, to th I need to sit down for like multiple hours a day and like rethink about what I think. Like it sounds crazy, but every morning I wake up like kind of on zero. You're already on edge when you wake up in the morning. No, like I wake up and I forget how I feel. Like, yeah. and I have to rebuild that. So like I need multiple hours usually in the day to like reconstruct how I think and what I feel about the world. And I hadn't done that for like four days with them because it was just like, it was usually just like with Gage, we were kind of going out, we were staying up late and I would wake up late and like I would, I had just been on a good rhythm back home. So like I was like getting myself to work out again and stuff. And then I was getting off all that. So then I felt like, all right, I kind of need to get away from them. And that's so why I think I made, I started making up reasons 
why it would be okay to get away from them. And then, cause it was just like, I'm, I basically remember telling myself that I'm going back down my same spiral. And then I freaked the fuck out and then left. Yeah. So that's pretty much what. It, yeah. Do I mean, you do any camping? Um, I kind of just started getting into like outdoorsy stuff. I, I just did a van tour like in December. And then, I mean, I love fishing boats. Like I love fishing and going on boats and being outdoors and stuff. I'm trying to do that more. Right now, like back home, I'm still sorting all this shit out. Like I'm, I'm in the middle of this shit like right now. But back home, I'm trying to sort out where I live currently because that's another fucking factor that I wasn't even mentioning. Like I, I had like a, all this crazy stuff happen and I just kind of, a lot of stuff in my life stopped. So I got out of a relationship like three months ago. And then that was- Congratulations. Like, no, yeah, that's like a weird thing in itself. I don't remember what I was just about to say about that. Do you remember what I was just going with that? Fuck yeah, he does. Look just, at him. Just, just remember. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Chicks come and go, but the true one will stay. No, that's the thing. And if you kick her to the curb, she wasn't the right one. Oh, I did. Yeah, and she <laughs> just wasn't the one. I know, bro. I don't know, bro. Emotions are crazy, bro. That, I feel like I... That's just age. It comes with age. I mean... So I, I was, felt like I was just like being, I was, I was not being married me. at 19 just, years old to, I, I, well, this is a off the, this will be an off the air type deal, but I was married at a young age and I'll explain a little more off the air, but sometimes right, you do the shit. Since you're off air. No, we're, we're not off the air. <laughs> <laughs> you just said you were. No, I said we'll have a conversation oh, off the air. Dude, go ahead anyway. Yeah, you're, you're, you're still, still, I'm 22 now. You're still fine. No, I mean, it's not like the FDA's out there. What's he got that's, some, that? that's some California vape, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's from Texas. Is it? Yeah, that's some weak shit. What is it? That's some. It's called Space. It's, I mean, I can some, read, but I don't fuck it. My ass bought it at 7 Eleven. It's like the oh. salt nicotine, so it's like the super strong no. stuff. But it's not fucking. There's no weed in there. But I, sorry, my thoughts keep going all over the place. No, I mean. I forgot what I was just about to say about the girl. Because it, it was leading to something. But at the end of the day, it. I mean. You're going to space out. You're going to do stuff. you got a lot of shit going yeah. on in your head. You're trying to clear that. And that's what you've been trying to do the last six months. Yeah. And it takes time. What you need to, I mean, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but I've learned having, I would say, four to five people I trust with everything in yeah. my corner. And, yeah, you can have a hundred, you know, people that are just over here, voices talking. You don't soak in what they're saying. Yeah. These five people are the people you trust with everything almost. Yeah. Now, I keep it down to there's mainly two to three that I go to with everything. Mm -hmm. And if I sounding board off them, they tell me, and the consensus is, Matt, you're a fuck up. Do this. Try this. Chances are, most of the time they don't tell me that. They're like, hey, dude, you're doing right. Why don't you try to tweak here? Mm -hmm. We just had a conversation about this two days ago. Just find somebody to help bring you instead of, Worrying yeah. about 10 things right now, whittle that down to two things you can work on today. Yeah. What do you say? Don't try to control something you can't control right now or some shit, or don't freak out about what you can't <laughs> control. What's that shit you say? I mean, the, the gist of it is don't don't worry about things you can't control. Yeah. You know, w yeah. worry about the things that you can. So, I mean, to me, with, with every issue or problem that ever comes across your mental desk, it goes into one of two fucking categories, right? Can I do something about this? Yes, yeah. then fucking do something about it. Yeah. The answer is no, stop fucking worrying about it. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the, you know, feeling like you're in a sail or a fucking rowboat floating around in the sea is that that, that is what's happening. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, is that the, the thing with life is that everybody's life is, is essentially that, is that if, the, if there isn't direction, if there's not routine, if there's not a plan and there's no sense of urgency, mm -hmm. Right. Like if you have enough money to where you don't really need to worry about shit and you don't have anything to fucking do. Yeah. Like idle hands are the devil's workshop. You're yeah. going to lose your fucking mind. Yeah. The reason I ask about camping is that I, I would I would bet every fucking thing in this room that if you went and spent three days camping, and I'm not talking about glamping in a van. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about actual camping where you're in like a, a national forest, like BLM land, uh -huh. not even a campsite where you take all of your own shit there, right? And you wake up with the sun and all fucking day long, you're worried about gathering wood, getting fucking water purified to drink, getting your shit set up, moving your campsite to wherever it is, making sure that your shelter is fucking solid, yeah. uh, pre prepping for the night because when it gets dark, you can't see a fucking thing, making sure that all, all of those things are, are the way they need to be. 
You do that for three days straight, right? And what I will tell you is that during that three days, what you won't think about is how fucked your life is, how depressed yeah. you are, yeah. some chick that you just shit, shit canned, yeah. you know, what state your businesses are in. You won't think about any of that yeah. because you're, you're focused singularly on, on the things that actually matter. But, but that's the thing, man. I'd be in my head. I can multitask. And I still uh, I'll bet you won't. Uh, here, here's what I would say. That, that, but no, that, but like, show but, up no water like that. Everything. No, I. Yes, like no. I mean, you you, you bring the the bare essentials, right? But you're not going in California where it's fucking seventy eight degrees and, and you're not going to freeze to death. I'm saying be be in a place where it's going to challenge you. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and and I. No, I that makes sense. You. you literally focus on like surviving survival That's skills it. that are like basic right. human necessity, and yeah, that that makes. Be, because the the environment. Uh, environmental conditions will humble everybody. Yeah, no, but I do. I do also want to say I don't know. I feel like, and again, it's also I feel like I got a lie to myself, but I don't feel like I'm lying. I think like I've been on a really good wave. Like I feel like I've kind of taken enough time after doing all my shit that I'm like getting my shit back together, and I do mentally feel better. I mean, I was fucking super anxious today and shit, but like I get better at dealing with it in different different ways, I guess, of dealing with it and kind of coming to I feel like I had to come to some conclusion of like all right what do I love so I can just start doing it and like I'm kind of just now realizing I just did this like stunt where I backflipped over our friends like Bugatti and like I was like I like stunts like what the fuck have I been doing like for seven years of my life I was at the skate park trying to do scary ass tricks that would like hurt myself but I would be like the first one to land it and so after doing that I'm like okay I like doing that why have I stopped doing that for so long and like I said, I signed the new management and I've taken enough mental break I feel like I am building in a positive direction um, and I like to say that for me because like I leave conversations and my mind's wherever the conversation was at. So like, I like to add that because I do feel like I've made good progress and I've, and I've given myself like much needed time to just take a damn mental break for a couple months, which was, so mentally, was how cool. do you feel if you tell your friend, no, what? your friend wants to go do something and you don't feel like doing it. How often do you say no? I always never, say yes. Never says no. And he might try to time. say no, but okay. I push really hard. But, so let me ask the question again. Think about it and make sure you answer it right. Your friend asks you to do something you don't want to do. Oh. How many times do you say no? Uh, are you asking me? I don't say no, but I should say you no. Know, are there times that's where you don't want to do them? Or do you, are you just always wanting like, fuck yeah, I'll do it? I just it. feel like, like I kind of like let life take me wherever the fuck it takes me because I just don't know what the fuck is even going on most of the time. So like no, no, like, no offense, like to this. Like I just exist. It was like, like pulling... I, Teeth and nails to get Tanner here, but then because yeah. I was overthinking it. Yeah, so, but he d doesn't say no. He ends up but coming he, through. Here's the thing, and I I can't remember who. I think it was your That's ass. True. I yeah. think it was his ass again because I've I've learned a lot from him business wise <laughs> and everything else. But it's he he came up to one day and he's like, I'm to the age to where I can, t I don't have to do shit I don't want to fucking do, mm -hmm. and you know, and I was like, yeah. Later that night, my wife's like. Hey, I want to do this. I'm like, no. And then I was like, I don't know if I could say that. And you realize you're a man, and you're and then, a man. And then she, she's like, okay. The fuck just happened there? This bitch, yeah, it's, a, a minute. it's a trap. Yeah. I ain't going to sleep. But I've been to that point to where I don't want to disappoint people, so I'd say yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes. And it becomes very hard on you but to not... You got to, sometimes you got to say no. But this is the thing. There's only certain people I won't say no to. Like, like Maverick's like my oldest friend. So like, that's just like a great time. Whenever we get to go fishing or some shit. Yeah. I always say yes to that shit. But back home, I've gotten better at pushing away the, the random nobodies that are like, why are you in my life? Like, hold on. Let me think about this for two seconds. Like, no, I'm not going to fucking hang out with you. So yeah. I think with those people I've gotten better at, because before I was just like, so amazed that all this shit was even happening to me. I didn't say no to anything because I just didn't know what was a good opportunity or what wasn't. So I think with that stuff, I've gotten better. But I do. I also I'm picking up on what you're what you're saying is like that's exactly what I was kind of saying. It, my thing was not, about is like I wasted too much time doing all that shit with my other friends, and, if you're, and then it overwhelmed the fuck out of me. And then that's something I have to deal with. You have to take because yeah. you were talking about that cookie and that rewarding your time and stuff like that. If you're always saying yes to them, you never have time for you. Yeah. And you have to have time for you. Yeah. I mean, even if you're in a marriage with a family, there has to be a point to where you're like, I need 30 minutes. I need an hour of just me. Whether that 30 minutes or hours broke up throughout the day, you got 
I mean, there were times raising a kid, and I know your ass has done it. I know that dude over at the computer's done it. You got a kid, kid screaming like a mother. Babe, I got a shit. You ain't got a shit. You're just going to go in the bathroom, sit there, and fucking read a magazine or do something just to get some time to not say yes. Yeah. To just sit back and like, mother fuck. You know? Yeah. Just relax. Yeah. You have to, in my mind, and I could be totally fucked. But you have to take time for you. No, this is and like really great no. perspective. I've never thought about like literally the things yeah, right. you guys are saying. Because I feel like, I don't know, I've been having like a hard time. Like I said, like everything's intense in my mind of like, okay, I'm becoming like an adult now. I have to think about things like an adult. But how, how does an adult think? Like I don't fucking know. So like um, in your guys' head, like do you feel like there was a, I mean, you were in the fucking Navy for 12 years, bro. Like you were working your fucking ass out. Or not the Navy. Navy yeah. SEALs. Yeah, Navy. Navy SEALs. Like, you yeah. were working your fucking ass off, so this might be even a dumb question to you. But I just feel like at some point... Actually, sorry. Let me let me start with this. Like, what's the meaning of life to you guys? Like, is the meaning of purpose. life, like, as a man it's purpose. to work? No, it's purpose. It doesn't I mean, it's going to be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's, like, the challenging thing is then finding purpose in something you can work hard at. Yeah. So... But at some point, did you, like, as, like, a, you were a young kid fucking around. I'm sure at one point you were fucking around, like, being a kid. And yeah. then you were like, all right, I'm a fucking man. Like, it's like, it's my duty to fucking get a job and carry <laughs> my own weight. Like, Maverick, you were even saying that. Like, you know, it's your job to, you know, you have rent to pay. You have your car, this, that. This, yeah. Like, as a man, that's your duty. Do you feel and that? Then, especially yeah, I mean, so for me, I, I joined the Navy at 17. Uh, at 19, I was at SEAL Team 3, mm -hmm. getting ready to uh, go on my first fucking deployment. So, um, you know, as far as growing up overnight, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the day that you show up, at a SEAL team, irrespective of how old you are, like you're surrounded by 200, you know, combat proven grown ass fucking men that, you know, have, have gone all over the world and, and shot people in the face yeah. for Uncle Sam. So like th there is no fuck around or, you know, time to be a kid or, yeah. or any of that shit. It's deathly serious the, yeah. the, the second you show up. Having said that, uh, I also think that um, that's a lot of the reason why I don't have a lot of the same uh, hurdles that a lot of people have is that, you know, from the day I left home up until I was 30 years old, like the, the routine, the structure, the seriousness, the, the being able to focus on things that are, are literally life and death, yeah. keep you so fucking focused. And, and, you know, meditation is powerful because it's a singular focus on one thing. It doesn't matter what that one thing is, but that's why it's mentally beneficial. And so in that position you have, I will call it the luxury of being able to uh, being able to stay so laser focused on things that are are important, they're fulfilling, they're purposeful, and, and they they give you meaning. Yeah. That you know, spending eighteen to thirty in that environment, being inundated with it, has hardwired me for the oh, rest I of my imagine. life that way. You know, so for me, it's it's very easy to to look at really anybody and, and see, okay, well, I, I can tell you what the fucking problem is. The yeah. problem is, is you don't have any real direction. Yeah. And I don't mean that as a slight. I just mean as, as from a scheduling standpoint, like if you say, okay, I don't give a fuck what I do the night before. I'm going to get up at 6.45 every morning. The first fucking thing I'm going to do is, is down five ounces of water and I'm going to go for a 20-minute walk with no headphones, with no sunglasses on. Mm -hmm. Every fucking morning, no matter what's going on, I'm going to do that, that first. Yeah. Right. And then from there, the rest of your day is still planned, but you know what's coming, you know what to expect. And then you know you, that next morning you wake up at 6.45. Right. Yeah. So, so that, that by itself, I can tell you, if you hold yourself accountable to just something that simple, mm -hmm. right, 20 minutes is, is really all you're carving out of your day. Mm -hmm. But what you're committing yourself to is getting up at a specific time before you would wake up on your own. So what that also does is that cuts out the 12 hours of bullshit that you probably would have partaken in prior to 6.45 because you, you weren't holding yourself accountable, yeah. you know? So that, that simple task right by itself, um, basically hardwires the rest of the day for productivity. I'm going to take that <clears throat> advice. I'm going to really well. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, it would be a game changer. Yeah. I guarantee Cause I don't have any structure. Like that's like the thing about me. I'm like a big ADHD ball of like fucking stress. Like everything's just ah, like yeah. in the moment. Nothing's like, that's literally how I've operated since I was 12. Yeah, it's unhealthy. Yeah, right. no, I know. It's very unhealthy. It feels that way. Yeah. Physically, neither of us, I would say, have to wake up at a certain time every day. No. I, but yeah, I'm I hardwired to where I'm up almost every day at 6.30. Like, if I sleep till 9.30, I can think of maybe two or three times, and I'll message him, God damn, I slept till 9.30. You know, I felt like I wasted two or three hours in the day. Yeah. But every day I wake up at 6.30, and it's – 
automatic the shit I do from 6.30 to 7.30. Mm -hmm. Every day, it's pretty much the same thing. And if I miss one of those minute things I do in that hour, one thing, and I realize it at 8.30, it's like, what the fuck, man? Did I just fuck up my whole day? Because it's so routine to do that. Yeah. Same fucking shit uh, every day. And it, like you said, it hardwires and it changes everything. Yeah. You know, my Saturdays are different. My Sundays are different because in my head, I'm always waking up. I'm always doing this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, every morning I get up at 630 and I go for a fucking 20 minute walk every yeah. fucking morning. You know, we Not, you know, and I message him, loser, because yeah. I'm drinking a Coke and eating donuts. Yeah. And it's funny. I look back on when like the times I was doing like daily vlogs for like two years. And I literally look back and my life was better and I was more happier when I was like, even when I was working that hard. But at some point I convinced myself that like, oh, this is too much. Like I need to just like experience like not doing this. And then like, I literally think back when I had that structure and it was like, I knew every day I had to post a video at 12 and I had to edit it that night before and I had to do my thumbnail in the morning and like this, that, this, that. It was like, I, I think about that before and it's yeah. Yeah, way better quality of life because yeah. I knew what I was doing every day and I didn't have time to like think about my feelings. Really, like it was just, yeah, you know what you're doing. But then that's also where it's like, then you're committing. I don't know where the overwhelming part of like that for me is, is like you just mindlessly commit to something. And then I, I overthink about this whole social media thing because it really does affect people. And like, I overthink of what I would put out or not put out or like what people are influenced by. Even if I'm like buying a Lamborghini, like, I don't know. Dude. Lamborghinis aren't fucking real. Like they're not. It's well, a real, yeah, it's a car, but it's, I know, I, I just sold mine, but. Like, you want to it's buy just mine? an it's just like a an object. I don't know. So then me being like, guys, this Lambo is like so fucking cool. Like, like everyone should get a Lambo. And then these kids grind their whole life, and then they get a Lambo, but that Lambo didn't even fulfill them because that wasn't their purpose. Like that was yeah. my purpose, but not theirs. Like I literally overthink like so much bullshit like that. It's so like the, annoying. The easy way to to uh, combat that is just be authentic, mm -hmm. right? But but there's a caveat with that. Obviously, the content is huge, so be authentic and then create around that. Yeah, but, yeah. But still and do all. That's the why shit I've been that working to, to get my mind back to a place of being comfortable. So like I know what I'm signing myself up for, and I I just know what I'm gonna do that day is not something I'll regret, I guess. But I did not like I regret any of the shit I did in the last five years. I mean, a couple things, but. Last two hours, maybe, but yeah. What? Probably when regret here. the last two hours, right? Me? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> you, so you, you know how I found his channel. You know, you know, kid, like any, like I say, kids. Anybody under twenty five seems like they don't understand sarcasm at all. Bro, I'm <laughs> autistic. <laughs> I don't think I just, so. I just don't pick up on it. Yeah. <laughs> We're very sarcastic. Yeah, the, the dry sense of humor. No, on I, I literally always had that problem. People try to do that shit, and sometimes I pick up on it. Sometimes I don't. Oh. Well, we're just, we're just fucking with you. Yeah. But. Oh, see? <laughs> see what I'm saying? I'll, get, I'll give you the heads up on that one. I'll just yeah. be dead ass. I'm just like, oh, no, I don't know what's yeah. going on. <laughs> Take everything literal. Yeah. Oh, literally, I do. Yeah. Wait, how'd you find Tanner's channel? So, crazy enough, I was looking for inspiration starting this channel, and we started with cars, and I found this kid, young-ass kid, I can't remember what car he's driving, and this chick with her damn boobs at <laughs> And I'm like, that's how I got a lot of motherfuckers on the like, channel. What the fuck? <laughs> I clicked on that. Hell yeah. And well, I was, and then I'm sitting there looking like, what the fuck's this kid doing? You know. And then I, I really went into looking and watching your stuff, and I'm like, his content's not my style because it's. I don't honestly. I'm fat and I don't give two shits about trying to get on a scooter, but I watch the grind. Like, I watched this stupid fool pull a fucking car in your foyer at your old house. Mm -hmm. It's like, <laughs> that's, some sh yeah. Yeah. that's some shit I would do to you if yeah. we just had yeah. fuck around time, you yeah, know? Yeah. And uh, I was like, it's not me, but it's so cool watching this. And it's like I said about Logan. There's some things I'd love to meet Logan, talk to Logan. Shit, I'd love to have him on here. But his channel's not for me, but I always watch it yeah. because I love watching the machine work. And it mm -hmm. was just like watching you grow the machine you created. And I kind of mentioned to Maverick. I said, you know, as he's going through depression, I, I bet you, I know what it is. Mm -hmm. And I kind of mentioned it to Maverick a little bit. And he's like, dude, yeah, you hit it pretty much on the head. And, uh, I just want to say at your age and I'm 42, it's an inspiration watching someone at your age, do what you've done. Thank you. I mean, as someone who I bust my ass every day and it's cool to see, and it's not like I'm sitting here 
fucking little lucky motherfucker. You know, what six numbers did you pick to win that yeah. lottery? You know, no, I, I see the grind. And a lot of people that aren't creators on YouTube or influencers or uninfluencers, they don't get it. They think it's just, in a way, it is a lottery ticket, but it also takes the balls to pick up that camera and put your life in front of it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I would say, I think you're doing a great job. They're just, you got to adapt to your mind's developing into an adult. Yeah. You're growing. Your audience isn't always growing with you. So it's shell shock when you put up something you're passionate about. And yeah. it's like, why didn't my audience love it? Well, yeah. your audience, if you would have pulled out some Legos and built a Lego castle, they'd have been like, fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to build a drawbridge, you know, because <laughs> they're younger. But then you got the motherfuckers like me talking about, damn, dude, I think if you went in the third, you could have got them titties out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Put some smiley face over them nipples next time. Yeah, really. But so it's cool watching the transition. Just don't rush into it. Yeah. You, you've you got to where you are by being you. Mm -hmm. Stay you. Yeah. You don't have to rush to be an adult. That's what I've been I'm, fighting. Like, I don't know. I have these voices in my head. You, fuck with me sometimes. Uh, but at the end of the day, you just, you're at a spot to where you can do what people like us would have loved to have done at 22 mm -hmm. and relax yeah. and fucking enjoy life. Yeah. What you're doing at 22, we're doing at fucking 42 and 43 mm -hmm. or 48. Man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have almost a 20 year jump on us to enjoy your life for 20 more years yeah. than we do. Yeah. So don't think of that in a negative. Think of that as a huge fucking positive. No, and I've like in this break too, I've finally been able to like appreciate that, like what you're saying, like literally that and like think about things and understand some the of the stuff I'm you've in. done for your mom. Yeah, no, seriously. And like, and my, and the, like a lot of my family and, and just actually taking a second to think about it. And that's, that's helped the process too. And just getting a good perspective of like what's going on. Like I said, cause it was just like 16 to now all videos. And then it was like, I had no perception of, yeah. Out of anything. So I, I've really feel like I've been able to be grateful for that stuff more. We talk about a lot and I got a daughter. She's 24. I also got a baby who's eight weeks, but oh, congrats. so this here, social media, this is the machine that works social media now, not computers like us growing up, you know, with learning and watching the internet evolve. So social media, you think, and I would say you don't think this, but a lot of people think that if this one person messages me, that I'm a piece of shit. Am I a piece of shit? And my way of thinking is, man, if you won't call me a piece of shit in person, and I'll never probably meet this dumb motherfucker that called me a piece of shit anyway, why do I let that affect me? Yeah. Same with you. You have, what, 10.3 million subs, yeah. not to mention your Instagram, your Facebook, and all that. Mm -hmm. So I imagine with all the positive you get, there's some negative that comes with that. Oh, yeah. You know, to me, and... I was big on it when we started, and he was like, man, just fuck them, ignore them, mm -hmm. you know? Because I try to answer everything. Hey, bro, it's hard. because I'm a people, people. pleaser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a I people mean, pleaser. But yeah. at the end of the day, there's, like I said, your content isn't my type of content. Mm -hmm. But as a creator, I can respect, and I watch what you do because it's fucking interesting watching yeah. the machine. So I respect it that way. But then again, you're going to get another 42-year-old like me who don't understand what you're doing. And totally. he's like, you piece of shit, lucky little fucking spoiled Yeah, 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 spoiled I'm grateful. Fuck. I can yeah. feel, probably get him on this. Yeah. yeah, you know, you're going to have that. Yeah, of course. Don't fuck that dude. You oh, know, yeah. don't let that one. No, and that's then why if it's I a chick, be like, show me your titties. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah I mean, here the, an easy way to reconcile that is, as it relates to other people's opinions of you, is it, ask yourself, is this somebody I would ask their advice? If the answer is no, then it doesn't matter what they think. Yeah. And that's good or bad, right? Because one of the big problems I see with a lot of people with, uh, you know, big brands uh, as far as content creation and stuff like that is they let the overwhelming positive inflate their ego also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, so on the same, you know, same token or in the same vein, if, if it's not somebody you would ask their advice, don't worry about what they say either way. Don't let a positive make you think you're better than yeah. you are. But don't let the negative fucking knock down your house of cards. Yeah, a uh, Drake, a rapper, he <clears throat> said it a long time ago. Don't get caught up in the highs and the lows. Yeah, I've tried. I've definitely kept that in mind. But it's it is challenging sometimes. Yeah, that yeah. they happen. But I, yeah. I totally get what you're saying. You got you about just, you just gotta ignore it. You yeah. got about three more years to where 
you're, then you're really going to be like, you know what? Fuck these people. That's- I know. No, I'm literally like, I'm really excited for the next five years because everything. You got a good I know we were talking about like plan. the hard work stuff, but like I was literally just doing what was fun in the moment, like the whole time. So but I'm it like, worked. no, and it worked like really well. And I mean, I was crying like every day. It was merch, brand new, yeah. yeah, yeah, this, that, Facebook, everything. But hmm. that's why I'm so extra excited for these next five years because. I feel like I've collected myself as an individual more, and I'm growing up more, and it's been challenging. I don't know why it feels challenging to me, but it's just a weird, life in general is just fucking weird. I don't know if you guys feel that way at, no, court, always, at your age. It's always weird. But like, life's fucking crazy, and yeah, I don't even know what the hell's going old. on. Yeah. That's all right, we are old, but uh, I mean, to me, the thing is, don't don't not do what you what you like. I mean, continue to do what you like and what makes you happy, just be structured about yeah. it. Like, mm-hmm. if there's one thing you take from this whole thing, at least from this side of the desk, or at least from from my side of it, is is fucking structure no i'm going to take your advice on that i wouldn't take any of mine yeah no bro uh so one thing my wife my wife's younger than me she's 27 28 Uh, i'm gonna be in trouble (laughs) john edit that no i'm just kidding uh that saying you only live once you only live once my wife looked at me one day and she said that's not true bitch what are you talking about she said you live every day you only die once that shit fucked me up for a little bit too, you know, because I'm like, God damn. You live every day, but you only die once. That bitch is right. What is she? Yeah, what if she is right? I mean, she, she is, is right. But what if you don't reincarnate or anything? I mean, that's a whole nother, like, you have to come back tomorrow because that's a whole nother. No, I'm telling you, I've into. gone down every fucking rabbit hole possible, bro. Well, see, I'm Indian, so they believe something totally different. Do you think that the earth is flat? I don't. I, I don't believe anything. I don't really care about that. Now? No, but I just, it was a meme question. Like, I want to ask because it's a meme question. Uh, I mean, I just want to know what you guys think. I, I don't think it is. <laughs> but I also don't think the moon landing is real. So. Yeah, I was going to ask my next question. Oh. Uh, what about the fall of the cabal? I never We're met not him. even going to get into it. I never met him. Uh, Maybe cut that out. <laughs> no, nah, fuck it. L- leave it in. Do you know what QAnon is? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, God, bro. He Those are memes. I'm saying memes. They're, they're jokes. But I feel like you guys would know what that is. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. But He gets in. If it's like. I went down all that shit, bro. I've been down everything. Every, I would love to have a conspiracy episode. You think 9-11 was an inside job? It had to be. 100%. But I don't, is that like allowed to say on a podcast? You can say whatever you want on a yeah, podcast. We, we do whatever the fuck we Not want. Not 100%. 99.9%. What are they going to do? Not give us money? I mean, True. Obviously. <laughs> I don't we, know, we bro. We got jobs. I just we be overthinking need. about that shit. That's what I'm saying. This entertainment world, I, it's way bigger and scarier than I like you think. Try, it is. try underthinking for a little while. I don't yeah. know how to do that, bro. This fool tells me that Here all the time. For, I went in the bathroom today to go pee, bro, and I convinced myself that I no longer believe in consciousness, bro. Like I was just taking a piss. Yeah. How much weed do you smoke? Yeah. yeah. How much? I hit that shit like one time today. I mean, no. But for how long? I hit a bong rip. Like, was it? It's not even that, bro. This is. I started smoking weed to turn this shit off, you and now they've answer. merged together. But I, are you I used to go to bed every night. Medical or street? Street. Well, like dispo. <clears throat> no, I know, bro. But I'm saying I started smoking weed because these thoughts were gnarlier, and I didn't know how to control them. And then now I'm just like, now the two me's have fused, and now I overthink all the time, anyways. Yeah. No matter what. It just like the like when I smoke, I probably get into little deeper states of mind. Structural help with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I literally <laughs> didn't go to like any sort of school. You, I, yeah, I, I raised I myself. I, yeah, I wake up pretty much at like seven a.m. every day. I was gonna say, if you need some structure, you can bring your ass up here. I'll have Bro, you. I've lived like, off fast food and skate parks since have, I was thirteen. I'll have you up here in a little maid's outfit, vacuuming and Bet. shit. <laughs> have, you, have you ever been in a bite suit for uh, for a dog, like a police dog? Um, no. That that'll keep you from overthinking. Let's do it. All right. No, that's why I be doing dumb shit all the time because I don't Hold like, on. It's like That'd fuck be it. some good content, probably. Is, wait, you is could, that hurt when you it could happens? Use the normal. Or is it just fear? I, I, I won't tell. Or do you it. think your viewers are gonna hate me? No. I, I mean, mean, do I sound annoying? Again, and like um, again, no. like unthankful. Like, so if because I'm literally just being honest, like I don't care anymore, and I'm just living in like I'm like whatever. But say we get five comments that watch the channel because. He's a Navy SEAL, and we get some people who and watch. And then you just had this, like, annoying YouTuber kid on. But at the end of the day, it's our choice, our show, to whoever we want to interview. I okay. think your story about depression coming up and what you've done with your life from 12 on is interesting to me. I'm sure it's interesting to Mike. And That's it's fair. our show to want you on here. If they don't like it, there's a little button. 
No, it's I, up in the top yeah, right. No, I will, I will say our, our viewership is, really. is pretty mature and, and open-minded. I mean, I like on my mic drop show, I've had, you know, all, all different types of guests on, um, you know, and, and some of them I've challenged their positions. Some of them, you know, we think very like-minded and everything in between. And, and yes, there's always going to be the, the handful of comments yeah. that are hateful or, or whatever. Because like but, this type of stuff, like I'd never talk about, I mean, yeah. in our podcast a while ago, but. Like right now, I'm trying to not like. Normally, I have so many walls up, and I'm like calculating everything I'm trying to say, so it's like makes sense with the storyline I'm trying to build and everything. But yeah. I'm not doing that right now, so I'm just like talking. That's good. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, we want you relaxed t- talking about what you want. We don't want to force you to say shit you don't want to say. Oh no, yeah. You know, so that's that's pretty. Well, much I was it. literally excited to come on here because it's just like it's like therapy a little bit. Yeah. I was like before this, I was thinking that like I was like I'm excited to just get a talk. For like an hour. Yeah, I mean, and I've told Maverick a couple of times, some of the shit you're going through, I've gone through, and I don't mind talking to you about it. I'm not a therapist. Yeah. But by any means. No, yeah, neither am I. I'm a fucking, I'm a dumbass plumber. I'm also a dropout. Mm-hmm. You know, I dropped out 10th grade to help my mom with bills. I did go back and get my diploma just because I needed that sense of finishing, and I couldn't sit there and tell my daughter, hey, you got to finish school. You know, I didn't want to be... That asshole that's yeah. like, hey, I didn't do it, but you have to. Yeah. You know, now she's a Baylor graduate. and Same with my girlfriend. Huh? Same with my girlfriend. She's a Baylor grad? She's a Baylor grad. Really? You what have she? a girlfriend? Yeah. What's I'm his damn name? Damn near married. What's, his name? <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what's her degree in? Uh, she's a Nick Uners. Oh, Where at? At uh, Medsip, Dallas. The, my daughter is a Nick Nurse at Baylor, Dallas. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah. well, well you guys hung out all day today, and this is just how you're... I ain't been with this fool all day. I thought you guys went to the fucking... No. Mexico. Dude, we went to Mexico. literally all I did was go in, and he's like, oh, you're going to be here all day. And then five <laughs> minutes later, we're like, you want to go for a ride? <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm used to like working on cars. It just takes yeah. way too long, because something yeah. always goes wrong. I'm, I'm, I've been working on cars probably longer than you've been alive. Yeah. But I, I want to switch one gear real quick. Do, you, do both of you guys have like a pinnacle dream car? Yeah. What is it? A Singer Porsche. Singer Porsche. Of course oh, it is. It's shit, right. We still got to talk it. about Porsche. Mine, since I was little, I always wanted a LaFerrari. Uh, so you're on his page then. I, I'm a LaFerrari freak. Yeah, that's, yeah. A my, that's, a, my, that's just but, been it. But see, I'm a total different person. I don't like red anything. Really? No. I feel like I would have to have a red one. To me, and, to me, and I think us growing up, Magnum P.I. was huge. And Ferrari was always red because of Magnum P.I. And, you know... Enzo Ferrari was, Fuck everyone you, thought please. it was red, but there, it's a certain type of red that we never see. Uh, you rarely see Enzo's true red. Really? It's not the red you see on, say, uh, Gage's dad's yeah, yeah, Ferrari. It's not the same as Enzo It Ferrari. would be on the Enzo only? So, no. it's You can get it on a Pista like he has. The closest I've oh, you ever, have the pista? Yeah. Oh, shit. The closest I've seen to it was on a pista he looked at. It was the actual Enzo red, and it's actually more orange than red. I would own that red, yeah. but regular red is not. Can you pull so up? So you guys are both Ferrari guys. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we, we both. Because like, that's why you say you don't necessarily love Porsche? No. No, so I've, I've had uh, two good. of them. But, uh, they just didn't do it for you? No, they're uh, for me. It's it's the emotion. You Who's know? got the to Ford me, It's kind of like uh, oh, he's pulling up. To, to me, Porsche is the chick that just fucking lays there. Look up Enzo. The That's red. what a Porsche is to she me. Looks like a outside lot of, of the GT cars, the GT cars are a different story. But GT cars on the street suck, and and I, I don't want to track a car. I want to drive on the street. So to me, like the, the that, that's the like if if you could put the uh, hydraulics that are in his perf in a, in a Porsche, uh, like a GT three or a two RS. Then you'd have my attention for a hundred percent sure, but no, I just uh, you know to me they they lack the uh, the connection to the road and and the emotion and, and the the passion behind wanting to drive a car, uh, whereas Ferraris and Lamborghinis, I would say the same thing about McLarens. I think they're pretty sterile and dead that way too, even though they're blisteringly fast. They're not that fun to drive, or at least from my experience. But yeah, would you say that Porsches are like too balanced? Like it's not fun. Kind of, um, but you know, more than anything, it's just like th- there's no there's no real character to them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not that they're not fast. It's uh, a textbook car, right? It's like it's over engineered to the point ah, where it's boring. I get what you're saying. I feel yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, but that's what makes it a winning car. 
But is it a winning car? Because it has the fastest Nuremberg lap time and a has the one? fastest. Yeah, but like, I mean, again, like <laughs> stock one. The whatever one is on the it's Nuremberg. Like when I mean, either either, either way, contest, like, and then like Hunter Frost pulls up, does some sketchy gnarly shit, and he wins. I mean, again, so like he won because he did the sketchy gnarly shit. Right. So you, t- you take a take a GT two yeah. RS right and and go drive it just around here, right? The way you would drive it on a Nurburgring, and and tell me if you enjoyed it. My okay, guess yeah. is going to be, fuck, no, I didn't. Like, my hemorrhoids burst, I chipped my fucking teeth, and my spine's compressed now because I'm in this car with a double wishbone front end and a, and a suspension that doesn't exist. Like, I'll, I'll take you for a ride. Fuck, you can drive the piece then. And if you take every experience you've ever had in, in any Porsche you've ever driven and compare it to, to taking a lap around here in the Pista and tell me if you still think Porsche is well, a better But you better rip car. it if you do. Yeah, you the, can't just you, drive it like yeah, you. Yeah, I know. mean, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call the police, and I'm gonna say my car was stolen. So you're gonna have to drive it spirit, <laughs> okay. spirited. All right. Okay. Deal. Deal. No, you right. would actually. I think you would gain a little bit of so respect, probably. If it doesn't make you want to stick your dick in the gas tank, I'll give you a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's Mike's piece. To, oh, that thing's fucking sexy. Yeah, we had that. Horse, I tracked one of those. We one had time. that poor, uh, horse put back here just for this photo shoot. Oh. Did they let you put it in uh, in any mode you wanted? Oh, yeah. It was like this like really wealthy guy I knew, and he had just got it. He was the first <coughs> one in the U.S. with one. Oh, he's shit. like, we're taking it to the track. He like ran out the track. He just like no, threw me in ridiculous. it. ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It's so fucking badass. That car made me sell my regular 488 like three Wait, weeks. Wait, you have one too? I had a base. I had a 488 GTB, but mine was tuned stage two. We don't have any i guess the piece of stock but everything else we have stupid well the 765 i left stock yeah you did oh 765 that's fire well so yeah i mean i had that for a few months and and to to give you some perspective i've had the piece to for 15 months i've put eleven thousand miles on it Damn. right Damn. and i've had half a dozen cars P- pull that that one back up that you just had up um yeah so um i've had that one for for the longest time of, of any car by five five x oh my mm-hmm. gosh and uh you how'd know, you get it uh there was a dealership down in houston that had it uh i wasn't planning on even <laughs> did they have to <laughs> that's did, me in the 765 <laughs> yeah. 765 that thing's fucking gnarly too how'd you even get that uh, i mean i just found one in california and, and shipped it here but um i only had the 765 for about three months the 60 to 130 on the 765 was 4.8 the piece is like 5.9 the mclaren is a much faster car the piece is at least 10 times more fun to drive. Yeah. And the Pista, because the 765 starts shutting down at 186? 190. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Pista catches it. Really? Yeah, I mean, the Pista will do 218. The Pista, know, fuck. The yeah. Pista's stupid. Jesus Christ. And it, and it pulls hard at the top, too. Like, it's it's really fast up, you know, 180 to, to 210. It's fast even up there, you know. Do they call those the Widowmaker 2 or no? No, it's the GT2 That's RS. Just the GT2 RS? So when we tell you the speeds our cars go, it ain't because we read it in specs. No, oh, yeah, you tested we, that shit. Oh yeah, we drive. <laughs> it's not out. tested. It's tested every weekend. Oh, it'll it'll be tested. How many times morning. you hit two hundred in the piece? Fuck, I mean, I couldn't tell you a ton. Literally? Oh yeah. You too? Fuck, like, yeah. bro. That car. <laughs> I've only gone two hundred one time in a car, and I wasn't even driving. Maverick Same. went one fifty yeah. down the street earlier today. I mean, tomorrow morning we'll be taking them both out and. Uh, I'm sure we'll hit it tomorrow morning in, yeah. in both of them. You know, it's on the highway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You may want to bleep some of that shit out. Yeah, John, bleep, John, bleep that. Please. Out. Maybe uh, just the the speed. Yeah. Just like bleep the fucking speed out. But damn. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, in in that span of time of of me having the the piece that I had a a, a twin turbo R8, I had a nine nine one nine eleven turbo S that was tuned down pipe and on meth. Jesus, bro. Had, you didn't like that? No. I had... Uh, <clears throat> Are you twin turbo? Yeah. I had a, a 488 Not GTB. I had... Uh, what else? A 992 um, that I tuned and downpiped. Uh, still didn't like that by comparison. I got a 765 LT. And all of those cars came and gone while I had the Pista. And it, mm-hmm. and it stayed. And now I yeah, have bruh. I have that in the twin turbo uh, Perfamante. Yeah, oh, okay. Had, oh, he wow. has the twin turbo. Mine's just supercharged. Who did it? UGR. Oh, wow. Fuck. Yeah, yeah Fuck. it's... Uh, <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. Of course, yeah. The it's closest ridiculous. I've been on anything like that is on a mo- like a very modded motorcycle. Yeah? Yeah, and that car's still faster. We have a video. What of it. what is the perf at power? 
uh, 1150 on pump and 1400 on race gas. It's on, it's on race yeah. gas right now. But, Fuck. And I know it's yeah. built pristine. Yeah, I'll show yeah, you the, the, uh, if those guys did it, it's built right. So I, I went out actually last night. Um, Bro, I, saw, I just sold six, my Huracan. I kind of regret it, but I'm also glad. Oh my fucking Jesus, bro! Yeah, it's uh, it's silly. You can buy mine outside. You don't want it? It's for sale. What? How much? What do they go for right now? Two seventy. With all that stuff on there, it's three seventy. Three seventy. What's done to it? That one's VF supercharged, full ten sixteen front end. Oh shit! End. Well, how much power does that make? That one's. You gotta take him for a ride. Yeah, I want to yeah, go I'm on a supercharged. I'm taking for a ride. That's sick. Here comes Perfumante. Yeah. yeah, I don't even know. Yeah. Perfumante supercharged. Per, yeah, it's a. Per. I've never been in a supercharged one. But. So, <clears throat> I honestly, I don't know about you, but if you want to talk, Tanner, maybe come back on another time, talk some so more down. about cars, stuff like that. Yeah. Because I think we got another hour at least in us. No, hundred uh, percent. I can talk endlessly. Yeah. So. Guys, we're going to wrap this episode up with Tanner Fox. Uh, I learned a lot. I hope you guys too did too. If not, fuck you. Bye, bitches. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Bye, bitches.